Welcome to Unit 7 of our lecture for Living in the IT Era, where in the topic is about IT and society. So for this lecture, we are to answer the following essential questions. What is the impact of IT and ICT on society? What is IoT? And what is the impact of ICT on individuals and organizations? For the intended learning outcomes, we will recall the current trends in the information technology, discuss the Internet of Things and its influence on society, explain automation and its in impact on society. IT and society. To explain about the Internet of Things, you could uh, watch this uh, video on TED Talks which tackles about everything about uh, IoT and its purposes and uh, why we should implement uh, IoT. Now, Internet of Things or IoT describes the network of physical objects or things that are embedded with sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the internet. Now, it has the following features. It uses AI, it uses connectivity, it uses sensors, it has active engagement, and usually they are small devices or small devices. AI or artificial intelligence. Individually, the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence are powerful technologies, but when you combine them, you get AIoT or artificial intelligence of things. You can think of Internet of Things devices as the digital nervous system. So the devices are the digital nervous system while the AI is the brain of the system. What is AIoT? So to understand the IoT, we start with the Internet of Things. When things such as wearables, uh, devices, refrigerators, digital assistants, sensors, and other equipments are connected to the Internet, they can be recognized by other devices and collect and process data. That is the Internet of Things. Now, AI is when a system can complete a set of tasks or learn from data in a way that seems intelligent. Therefore, when AI is added to the IoT, it means that those devices can analyze data and make decisions and act on that data without involvement by humans. These are smart devices and they help drive efficiency and effectiveness. The intelligence of AIoT enables data analytics that is then used to optimize the system and generate higher performance and business insights and create data that helps to make better decisions and that the system can learn from. Practical examples. The combo of IoT and smart systems makes AIoT a powerful and important tool for many applications. Here are the few. So for smart retail, okay, if you are familiar with Amazon, they have implemented this in their stores. In the Philippines, I am not yet familiar with uh, any stores that have implemented uh, smart retail, but this is uh, more common in the US, wherein all you need to do is to um, place your own camera on the devices and it will show promos, prices, and the likes. So in smart retail, a camera system equipped Equipped with computer vision capabilities can use facial recognition to identify customers when they walk through the door. The system then gathers intel about the customers, including gender, product preferences, traffic flow, and more. Analyzes the data to accurately predict consumer behavior and use the information to make decisions about store operations from marketing to product placement and other decisions. Example, the system detects that the majority of customers walking into the store are are millennials, you can push out product advertisement or each store specials that appeal to that demographic, therefore driving up sales. Smart cameras could identify shoppers, allowing them to skip the checkout like what happens in the Amazon Go store. Drone traffic monitoring. So in the smart city, there are several uh, practical uses of AIoT, including traffic monitoring by drones. If traffic can be monitored in real time and adjustment to the traffic can be made, congestion can be reduced. 
when drones are deployed to monitor a large area, they can transmit data and then AI can analyze them and make decisions about how to best alleviate traffic congestions with adjustments to speed limits and timing of the traffic lights without human involvement. An example of this is the AT City Brain, which is a product of Alibaba Cloud, which optimizes the use of urban resources by using AIoT. It can detect accidents, illegal parkings, and change traffic lights to help ambulances get to patients who need assistance faster. Another example are office buildings. Another area where AI and IoT intersect is in smart office, office buildings. Some companies choose to install a network of small environmental sensors in their office building that can detect what personnel are present and adjust temperatures and lighting accordingly to improve energy efficiency. In another use case, a smart building can control building access to facial recognition technology. So the combination of cameras and AI can com then compare images taken in real time against the database to determine who should be granted access to a building. In a similar way, employees would need to clock in or attendance for mandatory meetings would not have to be completed since AIoT systems take care of it. Fleet management and autonomous vehicles, AIoT is used in fleet management to help monitor the fleet vehicles, reduce fuel costs, track vehicle maintenance, and identify the unsafe driver behavior. Through IoT devices such as GPS and other sensors and an AI, companies are able to manage their fleet better. Another way it is used is with autonomous vehicles such as Tesla autopilot systems that uses radars, sonars, GPS, and cameras to gather data about driving conditions and then an AI system to make decisions about the data of the internet of things devices are gathering. So we also have autonomous delivery robots, so similar to how AIoT is used with autonomous vehicles. So mind you guys, autom autonomous vehicles are vehicles that can navigate or drive by itself safely. So those are autonomous vehicles. So right now, even Tesla has not yet perfected the autonomous vehicle. So maybe in the later time or in the later future. Similar to how AIoT is with autonomous vehicles, autonomous delivery robots are another example of AIoT in action. They have sensors that gather information about the environment. The robot is transversing and then make moment-to-moment -moment decisions about how to respond through its onboard AI platform. So what are the advantages? So we have improved customer engagement meaning uh, the customer is engaged. So you have a higher chance of selling or the customer having a desirable feedback on your product. You have technology optimization. So you use the, late, the latest and the greatest technology. You reduce waste. You reduce waste on time and other resources. It also allows us to have enhanced data collection. So through the data gathered from different persons, but they also have its uh, disadvantages, namely security, privacy, because remember your data is collected, complexity, the more devices, the larger the area for interconnection, the more complex IoT becomes, flexibility, you cannot just adjust to a particular situation that easily and compliance. Not all are employing IoT or AI OT. IoT sensors. We have different sensors used for IoT. The most important uh, sensors are the most important hardware. They consist of energy modules, power management, RF, and sensing modules. RF modules manage communications through their signal processing, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth, radio transceiver, duplexer, and BAO. So these are the different sensors that uh, you could see in IoT. We have temperature, light, pressure, 
humidity, and the likes. We also have wearables, which they themselves have sensors. Could be wearables for the head, the neck, the arm, the torso, or the feet. Okay, for the standard devices, we have the desktop, the, lab, uh, the tablet, and the smartphone. For the software, it involves data collection. As I've said earlier, wherein data are collected from different uh, demographics of user. We also have device integration. We also have real-time analytics wherein data collected are processed real-time so that to come up with the most immediate plan of action. And then we also have application and process extension. So this is where your IoT interacts. So through the different applications and how it interacts with other applications. Next, we have technology and protocols. We have the NFC and the RFID, which are wireless protocols. RFID stands for radio frequency identification, referring to, te referring to a technology whereby digital data is encoded in our RFID tags or smart labels and then captured by a reader through radio waves. It is similar to barcodes that data from a tag or label can be captured by a device that stores the data in the database. However, RFID has several uh, advantages over systems that use barcode and tracking software. The most notable is that RFID tag can be read outside the line of sight, whereas uh, barcodes must be aligned with the optical scanner. So you have a sample here. Next. How, do, uh, hard, how does RFID work? The RFID belongs to a group of technologies referred to as automatic identification and data capture. AIBC methods automatically identify, collect data about them, and enter those data directly into computer systems with, with no human or mechanical intervention. It utilizes, it utilizes two radio waves to accomplish this. A simple, at a simple level, RFID consists of three components, an RFID tag, and for smart label, a reader and an antenna. RFID tags contains an integrated data, which are used to Transmit data to the RFID reader or interrogator. The reader then converts the radio waves into a more usable form of data, which is to be used by the computer. Information collected from the tag is then transferred through a communication interface and sent to a host computer system where the data can be stored in a database and analyzed at a later time. RFID tags and smart labels. RFID tag consists of an IC and an antenna. It is composed of protective material that holds the pieces together and shields them from various environmental conditions. This protective material depends on the application. For example, employee ID badges containing RFID are typically made from durable plastic and tag is embedded between the layers of plastic. RFID tags come in a variety of shape, and are either passenger or uh, sorry, passive or active. Passive tags are most widely used as they are smaller and less expensive to implement. They must be powered up by the RFID reader before they can transmit data. Unlike passive tags, active RFID tags have an onboard power supply or battery, enabling them to transmit data all the time. RFIDs. 
application. So these are the different application for RFID. We have inventory, asset tracking, personal tracking, controlling access to res restricted areas, ID, bad thing, supply chain management, and counterfeit prevention. What is NFC and how do they work? NFC technology allows users to make secure transactions, exchange digital content, and connect electronic device with a touch. They are short, short range from a touch to a few centimeters and require the devices to be in close proximity. It isn't some radically new technology. It simply is an evolution of the RFID that has been around for decades. If, our, if you've ever used a key card to access an office building or a hotel room, you already you are already familiar with how it works. Both RFID and NFC operates on the principle of inductive coupling for a short range implementation. It involves a reader device generating a magnetic field by passing an electric current through a coil. When a tag or a coil is brought nearby, the field induces an electric current with the tag, fans, anywhere, or physical contact. Then, once the initial handshake is completed, any stored data on the tag is wirelessly transmitted to the reader. The key differences between RFID and NFC lies in their transmission range. So RFID can be used for longer distances. For example, some regions automatically collect and throw, uh, collect road tolls through RFID. Tags are usually affixed to the vehicle windshields, and you simply have to drive through the toll booth. Communication can take place longer, even can take place even in longer distances if the RFID is equipped with the power source. NFC, however, only has a maximum range of a few centimeters in most, and in most smartphone-related applications. You'll find that the software will only initiate communication if there is physical contact. This is to prevent accidental triggers, especially important, especially important now the technology is used for transferring sensitive data. Also, take note that NFC devices can also act as either a reader or a tag. Meaning to say, an NFC can uh, be used as a reader or you can use it as an NFC card or as a tag to store data or information. This uh, bi-directional capability allows you to use one piece of hardware, such as your smartphone, for all kinds of different applications. It has been a staple feature on smartphones for several years at this point. The Nexus S was the first Android device to include it all the way back in 2010. Apple also eventually embraced the technology in 2014. NFC is present on every iPhone since 8 and iPhone 6. Similarly, wearable devices ranging from fitness trackers and the main kind of smartwatches like the Apple Watch also included. What can you do with the NFC? NFC can be used for the following data transfer with the release of Android Ice Cream Sandwich in 2011, Google introduced Android Me, allowing you to transfer whatever content or data you had on screen to other NFC enabled devices. All you had to do was to touch the back of both devices and accept the transfer prompt. Android Me was only recently shelved in favor of nearby share, which uses to prevent Wi Fi direct devices. It can also be used for mobile payments such as Samsung Pay, Google Pay, and Apple Pay. It uses your smartphone's NFC chip for contactless payment. Most debit or credit card displays will already have an NFC tag built in. The aforementioned app simply emulated these tags information from the issuing bank or financial institution. 
Once configured, all you have to do is bring your smartphone or your mobile device close to the card reader. Apps like Google Pay and Samsung Pay using NFC to facilitate contactless payment. We also use NFC for quick pairing. The convenience it extends to devices that don't have the screen. Many wireless speakers and headphones you just use it to exchange payment information with your phone. Some cameras also use it to quickly initiate the Wi-Fi direct connection for easy photo and video transfer. For public transport access, like in uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and London, we use NFC-based cards as a form of access control mechanism for public transit. Some systems are incompatible with payments, like Google Pay, so you don't have to turn in the card around. It's also used for gaming. For example, Nintendo uses the technology to connect physical toys with video games, such as the Amiibo. So Amiibo is like any other action figure or trading card, except that it's got, it contains an embedded NFC chip. If you bring one of this Amiibo near a Nintendo Switch or PDS, it will grant your characters or give you additional characters, level, or bonus items for a particular game. And lastly, for home automation, a few smart home platforms such as Home Assistant and Apple's HomeKit supports NFC as well. Using apps on both Android and iOS, it can configure official NFC tags to control devices or automation. NFC versus Bluetooth and Ultra Wideband or UWB. NFC is far from the only wireless communication protocol. In fact, most devices also include similar technologies such as Bluetooth and Ultra Wideband. So why include another? One of NFC's biggest strengths is that it does not require paying or manual input to establish a connection, having things less than a second. Bluetooth devices, by contrast, have to be paired to each other, which is kind of a cumbersome process. So, Remember when you try to pair a Bluetooth device to another, sometimes it fails, sometimes it's hard to connect one Bluetooth device to another, and then it asks, always or almost always ask for a pin. NFC is also significantly more energy efficient than Bluetooth and ultra wideband since the transmission is extremely short. Most smart smartphones shift with the NFC radio enabled by default, while turning off Bluetooth is often the first battery conserving suggestion. NFC is less power hungry and faster to use compared to Bluetooth. In fact, NFC's power draw also allows certain devices like the iPhone to enable it in emergency scenarios. This means even if your phone runs out of use or turns off, it will just it will send just enough power to the NFC chip for you to access your campus, hotel room, or car. So iPhone has a feature wherein even though your phone has a shutdown or turned off due to low battery, it still has enough power to make use of the NFC chip so that you can use it for the the different things that I have, or we have discussed earlier, such as all payments or as your key for your hotel room or your car. While cars are starting to adapt ultra wide band for keyless entry, it is nowhere near as efficient as NFC. To that end, it's not surprising that when the automakers implement the NFC as a fallback access mechanism. The wideband is also more expensive and most applications currently served by NFC don't need this positional precision. Furthermore, with so many NFC use cases already fleshed out, it's clear that the technology has carved a niche for itself. So that end, adoption is likely only going to improve from here, from here on out. So IoT, Technology and Protocols, first is low energy Bluetooth. So low energy Bluetooth is different from the classic Bluetooth simply because it uses very little energy. Okay, it's the same as Bluetooth, but it is only using very low energy. Bluetooth LE collect collect collectively 
BLE or uh, Bluetooth Smart is a wireless personal area network that can be designed and marketed by the Bluetooth Specialist Interest Group or CIG named at Nobel Applications in Healthcare, Fitness, Recons, Security, and Home Entertainment. It is dependent of classic Bluetooth and has no compatibility. Sorry, it is independent of the classic Bluetooth and has no compatibility. But Bluetooth basic rate, enhanced data rate, and low energy can coexist. The original specification was developed by Nokia in 2006 under the name Weebly, which was integrated with the Bluetooth 4.0 in December 2009 as Bluetooth Low Energy. Compared to classic Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy is intended to provide considerable speed of use, reduce power consumption, and cost while maintaining a similar communication. Mobile OS, including iOS, Android, Google Phone, Blackboard, and as well as Mac OS, Linux, and Windows, natively supports Bluetooth Low Energy. Next is Low Energy Wireless. Engineers now have many choices when it comes to low power wireless technology, including RF or radio frequency based technology, such as Bluetooth or Energy, and TV, RF or NFC, Nike Plus, Wi Fi, and different options captured by the infrared data association. But the dry choice makes the selection, selection process more difficult because each technology Speed off between power consumption, bandwidth, and range. Some are based on open standards while others remain proprietary. The complicating statement further rewind this interface and for purpose of the to emerge to understand the needs of IoT, one of which is Google Low Energy. So, uses of low power wireless technology and networks versus smart building and homes, intelligent. Building networks are moving past the early adopter stage into the early majority. The government regulatory driving the need for connected utilities and intelligent lighting and environmental management being used to make homes and offices more energy efficient. Wireless networks play a key role in the connected building. Next is smart cities. Governments around the world are investing heavily in adding connected infrastructure to their environments. Primarily in street lighting and environmental monitoring solutions, among other applications. Asset tracking, low power networks are providing a new business model in the form of subscription for tracking of things. In agriculture, technology is increasing re entering the agricultural space with new ways to monitor crops, water usage, environmental conditions, and other aspects designed to ensure produce uniform meaning. Loop uniformity and good yields in farms and vineyards. The long-range and low-power requirements of low-power wide area networks are simply one that works with a suitable person application. We also have the different uh, data protocols used by IoT. IoT data protocols are used to connect low-power IoT devices, providing communication with hardware on the other side without the need for internet communication. The connectivity in IoT data protocols and standard is through a wired or cellular network. Examples are MQTT or message queuing telemetry transport. It's a lightweight IoT data protocol featuring a publisher subscriber message messaging model and allows for simple data flow between devices. Its main selling point is its architecture. It's genetic makeup. It's basic and lightweight, and therefore, it's able to provide low power consumption for devices. It also works in part of TCP IP protocol. IoT data protocols were designed to tackle unreliable communication networks. This became a need in IoT world due to the increasing number of small, cheap, and low power objects that have appeared to the network over the past few years. We also have the co-op or constraint application protocol. It's an, it is an application layer protocol designed to address the needs of HTTP-based IoT systems for hypertext transport protocol. And it's the foundation of data communication for the World Wide Web. 
while accessing a structure of the internet is fairly available and usable by any IoT device, it's often too heavy for showing for most of the IoT applications. This has led to many within the IoT community dismissing HTTP as a protocol not suitable for IoT. However, Co-op co has addressed the limitation by translating HTTP model into usage in restrictive devices and network environments. It has incredibly low overhead, easy to employ, and has the ability to enable multicast support. AMQP, or Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, is an open standard application layer protocol used for transactional messages between servers. Its main functions are receiving and placing messages in queues, storing messages, setting up the relationship between these components. With its level of security and reliability, it's most commonly employed in settings that require server-based analytical environments such as banks. However, it's not widely used elsewhere due to its heaviness. It's not suitable for IoT centered devices with limited memory. As a result, its use is still quite limited within the world of IoT. HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, as mentioned, it is not preferred as an IoT standard because of its cost, battery life, huge power consumption, and weight issues. However, it is still used with some industries. For example, manufacturing and 3D printing rely on the HTTP protocols due to the large amount of data and can publish. It enables PC connection to 3D printers in the network and printing of three dimensional objects. WebSocket launched in 2011 as part of the HTML5 initiative. By a single, by a single TCP connection, messages can be sent between the client and server. Like OAP, WebSocket standard connectivity protocol helps simplify many of the complexities and difficulties involved in the management of connections and by direction communication on the internet. It can be applied to an IoT network where data is communicated continuously across multiple devices. Therefore, you can become useful in cases that access clients or servers that includes runtime environments or libraries. IoT network protocols are used to connect devices over a network. There are a set of protocols typically used over the internet. Examples are Wi-Fi, so it's, it's regarded as the most well-known IoT protocol. However, it's still worth explaining how the most popular IoT protocol works. In order to create a Wi-Fi network, you need a device that can send wireless signal. This includes telephones, computers, or routers. That being said, the list goes on. It provides an internet connection to nearby devices within a specific range. Another way to use Wi-Fi is to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Mobile phones or computers may share a wireless or wired internet connection with other devices by broadcasting a signal. Wi-Fi uses radio waves that broadcast information on specific frequencies such as 2.4 or 5 gigahertz channel. Furthermore, both of these frequency ranges have a number of channels through which different wireless devices can work. This prevents the overflowing of wireless networks. A range of 100 meters is typical of a Wi-Fi connection. As I said, the most common is limited to 10 to 35 meters. The main impacts on the range and speed of Wi-Fi connection are the environment and whether it provides internal or external coverage. Bluetooth. When compared to other IoT network protocols listed here, Bluetooth tends to frequency hop and has a generally shorter range. However, it's been a huge user base due to its integration into modern mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets as well as wearable technologies such as wireless headphones. Standard Bluetooth technology uses radio waves in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM frequency and is sent in the form of packets to one of 79 channels. However, the latest Bluetooth 4.0 standard has 40 channels in the bandwidth of 2 megahertz, guaranteeing a data transfer rate of up to 3 megabytes 
perspective. This new technology, otherwise known as Bluetooth Low Energy or BME, can be the foundation for IoT applications requiring significantly flexible, scalable, and low power consumption. Next is Sigli, which is similar to Bluetooth in the sense that it already has a significant user base in the world of IoT. However, its specifications likely eclipse the more universally used Bluetooth. It has lower power consumption, low data range, high security, and it's longer range of communication because it can reach 200 meters, while Bluetooth maxes out at 100 meters. It's a relatively simple data packet exchange protocol often implemented in devices with small requirements such as microcontrollers and sensors. It easily spills thousands of nodes. This makes it no surprise that many suppliers are offering devices that support SIG-based open standard self-assembly and self-cleaning lean technology model. Steewave. It is an increasingly popular IoT protocol. It's wireless radio frequency based communication technology primarily used for IoT home application. It operates on 80 to 900 megahertz radio frequency. On the other hand, SIGB operates on 2.4 gigahertz, which is also major frequency for Wi-Fi. By operating on its own range, CWA rarely suffers from any significant interference problem. However, the frequency the C-Wave device operates on is location dependent. So make sure you have you buy the right one for your country. C-Wave is an impressive IoT protocol. However, like Sigby, it's best used within the home and not within the business world. LoRaWAN is a media access control IoT protocol. It allows low power devices to communicate directly with internet connected applications over a long range wireless connection. Moreover, it has the capability to be mapped to both the second and third layer of the OSI model. It's implemented on top of LoRa for FSK modulation for industrial, scientific, and medical or ISM future times. It's IoT and society. So for our society, IoT has different purposes. It's for media, marketing, and advertising. So for example, a customer buys a product containing sensors. Sensors also share use characteristics and performance data. Sensors share locations of use. And IoT systems then present relevant information and malfunction detection, such as ads for solutions, or product reviews for replacement products. So IoT trade, service dominant market return, IoT impact on marketing strategy, price, pay for use of service. So our society can use IoT for media, marketing, and advertising. So really cost following IoT trades, service dominant market return, which involves a price, you pay for the use of the service, brand relationship and conversation, serves as a promoter, design and complexity of things for our product, on demand new functionality through agile and design thinking, and marketing skills for IoT is a place, anticipatory marketer. Media marketing and advertising could be consist of marketing and content delivery as well as improved advertising through the use of sensors and IoT devices. Next is environmental monitoring. Used in air and water pollution, extreme weather, commercial farming. IoT through the use of sensors can help us to check different conditions of the air and water, which in turn can help in uh, monitoring the health as well as the status of people living in a particular location. It will also help in aiding what particular uh, environmental factors are affecting uh, different living things in a particular location. It can also help us to check the weather patterns, like La Nina and La Nino, 
So, La Nina is the prevalence of rain, rainy weather in a particular location or country, whereas La Nina is the prevalence of extreme heat in a particular area or location. Commercial farming. So, if you are familiar with the concept of carbon credits, so in the United States, farms can sell the captured carbon dioxide from the atmosphere uh, from the atmosphere to their particular land. So it, it can be measured by IoT sensors. And then the amount of carbon dioxide that they capture on their particular land can in turn be sold to different companies in order to offset the carbon footprint that their company makes. So that is one example. Also another example is uh, to fully utilize resources such as water, fertilizers, and the likes. Sensors can be placed in uh, the farm in order for it to check the different uh, environments such as amount of sunlight, uh, the, the soil humidity, the air humidity, in order for the different resources to be used properly. It can also be used for manufacturing applications, such as intelligent product enhancement, dynamic response to market demands. So if you notice during uh, this uh, pandemic, from 2020 up until now, there was an increased demand for the production of face masks, alcohol, and sanitizers. So through the use of IoT, they can uh, better devise means and ways of improving manufacturing technologies manufacturing technologies in order to produce their device, uh, their product faster and more efficient. It also helps in lowering the cost of optimized research use and waste reduction, improve facility safety, such as uh, checking of temperature, humidity, um, toxicity level, so in nuclear power plants, they use IoT sensors to check the, the heat as well as the uh, radiation activity of the workplace so that they know if the nuclear facility is still safe for people to work at or not. And then product safety, IoT sensors can check for the presence of uh, foreign materials in certain products. Energy application. So for residential, commercial energy, and it allows us for reliability. So IoT sensors can be used, for example, um, to automatically switch a particular home or business from solar when it is daytime to a different form of energy resource during night times. So IoT sensors can check for the presence of sunlight or light. Um, IoT sensors can also check for the presence of, um, for example, in the case of wind, wind power or hydrothermal power or geothermal power, if there's still wind, if there's still uh, movement of water, if the temperature is still high, if it can generate electricity, it can switch to one resource to another. It can check if the battery is already full so that it can switch to, or it can charge other batteries. So it has different possible applications in the energy sector. And then also for the healthcare application, it can help in research, creating new devices, um, providing better care, medical information distribution. Okay. 
for building and housing application, it can help in uh, environment and conditioning, health and safety, and as well as productivity and quality of life inside the house and uh, in the, at work. For transportation application, just like I said, um, the project of Alibaba can help in congesting traffic, can help in uh, making our roads and highways more efficient and safe, particularly rails and mass transit, roads, automobile, and commercial transportation. For education, can help educators personalize education as well as education organizations. For government application, can be used for city planning and management, creating jobs as well as national defense. For law enforcement, can be used for policing. So for example, automate, automating uh, traffic, traffic uh, lights as well as automating possible arrests for uh, automating the dispatching of uh, law enforcement as well as uh, fire, fire personnel. It can also help in court system. And lastly, for consumer applications. For consumer applications, for the home, it can take the place of a butler, a chef, a nanny, a gardener, repairman, and security guard for work, for play. It can, uh, aid, it can uh, aid in uh, the betterment and uh, more to have a more enjoyable culture and nightlife, as well as invitations and products and services. That is all for unit seven of our lecture for this Thank you and take care.